Maybe we don't know. Maybe we don't know. This time, 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 this time,
because really what they need to be able to do is communicate with the kids, help shape the kids and their, their happiness and how psyched they are and how much they love the sport. And nobody loves the sport as much as you. So I'm glad that you're in that coaching role. I love it. It's uh, one of those that our our general manager, Reese, approached me about it. Like I said, I think I was seven months into climbing. Um, and again, I did go to the um, obsessive side very quickly. Like <laughs> I was there all the time. So I honestly think there's part of him that just was like, can we give this girl a job since she's here all the time anyway? But he was like, hey, have you ever thought about coaching? And at the time, I literally told him, I was like, I, I don't think I should be coaching anyone on any of this. And he, he said, I think you're going to be surprised what you have to offer. And I got to assistant coach with some incredible coaches first. And kind of as I progressed, definitely found my own way of teaching and have loved that. But I do think now that I'm a little further down, down the road, there's a lot of value to coaching as a newer climber because I can remember what it was like to be a beginner still right right. which is hard to access once you've been climbing for a long time you forget what it's like to not know how to move your body on the wall or what it feels like to be really scared of bouldering or Mm -hmm. whatever it may be and so it's it's helpful for me to still be able to access that kind of my, my in my recent history and communicate that with my kids for sure and you're a junior high school teacher, so you have this skill set of you know dealing with with kids and and how they learn, and I think that's invaluable in those spaces, especially in a big city climbing gym where they're you know where big teams happen. Oh man, I love. I'm one of the rare people in the world that I think middle schoolers are some of the funniest and most interesting people we've had. <laughs> this explains so- why you think Lana is funny. <laughs> no, I love Lana so much. I'm her biggest fan. <laughs> but, oh, for sure. There's something about, yeah. Most of our kids, at least the ones that I coach, are like 12 to 15. We don't get a ton of high schoolers in the mix. Um, every now and then we get some. But yeah, just, I mean, incredibly awkward. I do joke every now and then um, that climbing is like the perfect sport for those kids that I'm like, do you not have like a focused group of friends to sit with at lunch at school? Right. And right. like, we have got, we've got your people here. And mm-hmm. I love, I love watching them come in and like figure out the sport, but I do. I also love watching them just kind of connect and come out of their shells and, and find their little groups here. I have a group right now that, they actually come because I I coach Tuesdays and Thursdays and I climb Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, and they have this little group, their parents drop them off and they come in and like belay each other and work on their projects. And it's like, it just fills my heart. Like it makes me so happy. I love it. I love it. I love that you're there more than anything, because that's what, that's what this community needs. You know, good people shaping the people who are coming in and as a as a relatively new climber, I think it's a little fascinating and and good that you picked this chapter, this success versus mastery chapter. It's it's one of the things I think that the climbing community does a pretty poor job of in gen or has done a pretty poor job of up to recent times. Um, in that we put so much emphasis on the the obvious successes, you know, the send the boulder, the win the comp, things like that. And, and we aren't putting a lot of value on mastery. And it's a, it would be really easy as a beginner climber to get lost in that, that cycle of success that can be so damaging if you latch your self-worth onto it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's definitely hard. I will say that I chose this chapter. This is one of the chapters that challenges me the most. Mm. And so it's one that I still have to actively work on. But we have such a good crew of veteran climbers, especially Momentum Katie. And I have been really lucky to have the opportunity to 
be more or less mentored and climb with a lot of them. And it was something that I noticed right away. Um, that was pretty different from them and kind of maybe our more middle of the road, casual climber in the gym was the very best climbers in our gym repeat stuff constantly. Mm -hmm. And even if they get back on it and they fail, they'll get on a project and they'll try and send it as many times as they can before it comes down or they'll pick a number and be like, Hey, you know, I want to repeat it this many times. And yeah, it's very tempting once, especially if it takes you a long time to send something. Yeah. As soon as you send it to be like, I'm never touching it again. Yeah, right, <laughs> I'm not, right. not going to throw it off. Very, very common response in my experience. Yeah. And so it's, it's <clears> taken <throat> me a while to get into that rhythm. I found that boulders have been actually a better introduction to that for me, but starting to kind of work some circuits and some four by fours into my routine and learn like, Hey, I'm not just going to do this once and think, well, maybe it was a fluke. Maybe it just was a, you know, low gravity day, something like that. But to learn, no, I want to build these skills. I want this thing that felt so hard to feel really normal, really casual as much as it can. And that's been very, very valuable to my climbing. I think more than physically, it's been very valuable mentally. It just builds reps and success for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's how do you, as, as a coach, how do you approach helping the kids kind of learn to value mastery more? Um, I know I'm just throwing you into things here, asking you this question, but are there things you do specifically with the kids that help take the focus away from, send the boulder is the only success that I can have and more toward how do I master it and become a better climber? This is definitely a tricky little journey with teenagers for sure. Absolutely is. I mean, it's a tricky journey for me Mm -hmm. and I'm a pretty healthy adult, but yeah, you're looking at a 13 year old kid who's like, I just want to get to the top of this boulder and I want it to be the hardest one that I can do. Um, What I've tried to do with my kids is help guide them into an appropriate level of challenge, first of all. And so Mm -hmm. as often as I can, I try to cover up grades when we're working on things, um, especially boulders, and say, hey, I want you to choose something based on how difficult it feels to you. And I tell them right away at the beginning of every season and remind them, I'll actually walk them around to routes in the gym and be like, Hey, here is a 512B that I can just float. Like it's just totally my style went down easy. And then I'll walk them over and be like, and here's a 10B that I just have nightmares about. You know, it's usually a sloper yeah. fest. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just let them know. I, I am definitely like a techie crimp ladder girl. If I can find a really nice vertical crimp route of any kind, I'm very happy you put slopers on anything, I'm like, oh no, I have to deal with this. And so I remind them that so much of climbing is, you know, grades are very subjective Mm -hmm. and I want them to challenge themselves and I want them to grow. And when I see kids starting to get frustrated on a boulder or a route, I try to pull them one-on-one. We're lucky that we're generally coaching in pairs. And so we have the opportunity to kind of pull kids one-on-one if we need to. And I'll say, hey, tell me three things that you learned mm. on this folder. Tell me Good. three things that went well. And so I'll be like, hey, I noticed you got a new high point on this. Or I'll point out, sometimes they don't even know. I'm like, hey, you really, really struggled with uh, this particular move before. And you're just hitting it really naturally now without having to think about it. Or I know mm-hmm. that you were really scared to do this move. And so you go right. for it anyway. That's a big right. deal. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So trying to kind of coach them through finding those, those small things that remind them they're learning as they go. So even if they don't necessarily send, or even if it's not something new and exciting, you know, I, I have a girl in my class right now that she's about to get passed to a higher class. I'm a little sad about it, but she started climbing with me three seasons ago and she could not start a easier. Like there was no 
you know, you build climbing IQ after a while and you can look at a rat and you can read it. And she would look at a boulder and just have no idea what to do. And I watched her last week walk up to the start of a V4 that has kind of a tricky start and immediately read it correctly and like position herself in the start and just go. Hmm. And I actually, I actually cried. <laughs> I, got to, I told her and I was like, Izor, I want you to think about the first time you walked in here and you couldn't figure out how to start. And you just automatically know. Now that's such a big I love deal. It. Yeah. I love it. That's so powerful. And I mean, that's why I say I'm glad that you're there because you care so much and it's so it's such a valuable thing for them to learn to to find those those wins that might have been hidden to them and to have a coach say i remember last week or last month or last year or whatever when it was this way for you and i know that's hard for you to remember but this is how it was and now look what's happening and to to find the wins not only in the I did the move or I sent the boulder, you know, the really tangible, obvious things. But in the, you, you were really afraid of that. And I saw you try anyway, you know, I saw the effort you put into this move that you were afraid to put effort into before. Huge, such a massive win that then leads to all those other wins that we, you know, that we tend to focus on. Yeah, so it's, big. it's difficult to explain to people who don't climb, but there have definitely been times on routes for me that taking a big whip was a bigger victory than sending the route because it got mm-hmm. me over a mental hurdle or just getting on something and trying it when I really didn't want to and was really scared of it. So those, those mental wins as much as I can, I try to, I try to call those out because those have been such a huge part of climbing for me. Absolutely. And, you know, something that I, I just popped into my head while you were talking, something you said reminded me of it is that this illustration, Brendan's illustration for this chapter, um, for me was one of the most poignant of the whole book. Um, in fact, I think I had it in when I did the workshop at Katie, I think it was in the slideshow. Um, I think it was. Before the book came out, <laughs> I was excited and just wanted to show it to everyone because the the idea of success versus mastery being this visible thing that you can see uh, sending it once versus sending it, you know, a bunch of sending it onces um, <laughs> was so powerful. And I just, I love the, I love seeing coaches like you um, grab onto this stuff and help other people figure it out. Yeah. It's been so helpful. And it's also one of those that it's <clears> a, <throat> it's a good loop kind of system where in, in teaching my kids this, and talking them through it, those those words come back to me in my own climbing when I'm, you know, standing beneath a project and I'm like, I don't want to unsend it or I don't want to yeah. get back on this. And it reminds me, I, luckily, my, my current climbing partner, Andy, is great about this, where he sends something and he wants to send it again and again to make sure he really has it down. But there's plenty of moments when I'm standing there going, ah, and then I think about what I tell my kids and I'm like, all right. Mm-hmm. I make them do it. I need we to used it. to we used to have a rule um, when I was very first. I don't even think Power Company was a thing yet, but I had this little crew of people that I trained with at the gym, and we had a rule that when you sent a sport climbing project in the gym, you immediately had to lower down and try to top rope it. Oh, and, <laughs> and so often people would send something that they felt like that was at my limit. I, there's no way I could continue. And they would get to the bottom and they would start climbing again. And they, you know, they would get three quarters of the way up. Sometimes they would send it twice in a row. Yeah. And, and so surprising, 
but it takes away that pressure of unsending if if that's the rule and that's just what that's what we do you know yeah and such a valuable way to let go of that that artificial success we've created and really start to value how much more you can learn and how much better you can be for sure oh and i can't even imagine like again just for the mental reps of there's yeah. It's almost like a drug to me, the feeling of like having a climb that was so hard for me the first time I got on it. And by the time I've worked out, out all the kinks and all the beta, I just sent a climb like this at our gym that it's just like a beautiful feeling climb. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but it's not my usual style. And by the time, you know, it took me way too long in my mind to get the top move down. But I had run it so many times by by the time I sent it that I was like, man, it just feels like floating up it. And so, yeah, right. just all of those, all of those reps build up so much confidence and so much comfort on the wall that it's super valuable. I might steal that, uh, that right after you send top rope. Do top it. Rope steal it. Kind of miserable, <laughs> but I, <laughs> but I kind of want to do it. I don't know. Take it as your own. Just pretend you made it up. Um, I'll go yeah, with it. Totally. Didn't hear about this anywhere else for sure. <clears throat> well, Riley, again, I, I appreciate this conversation. It's it's so good to, you know, we 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 spend a lot of time traveling around the country to different gyms and talking to coaches and you know, and then I get to see what they're doing on Instagram and for me, that Houston community was really special and and I just I latched onto a lot of the personalities there and really enjoyed it. And you're one of the people that, that I, you know, if I see your stories pop up, I always watch them. I just want to know what you're doing and I, I love your energy. So thank you for, for enjoying the book and, and for sitting down with me and talking about it. Man, thank you for writing it. And thank you for asking me. It was awesome. Tomorrow, the send is a necessary piece of the process. We don't tweet. We scream like eagles. This